subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to another Ninja Coaching Spotlight. I am super excited. We have a very fun guest with us today. We actually have two guests with us today, which I'm very excited to announce. First, we have Abby Baker from Premier Brokerage International. She's in Palm Beach County, Florida. Abby, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's going to be great. We're going to have a lot of fun today. And I also have one of our coaches with us, actually, Heather Mance, who coaches Abby Baker is with us also. So Heather Mance, welcome also. Hello. Good morning. Very good. Well, good morning to you, Matt. You're here with me as always. Great to have you, sir. How are you? Good morning. I'm great, man. Great to be here. This is going to be a fun one, as they all are but I'm excited to share Abby's story with everybody. Well, this is a fun journey today because, and you know, a lot of times it gets brought to my attention. It's like, well, we get to hear about people's stories that they've been doing this for a long time. They've got their successes. They've, you know, they've built this incredible business. And uh, Abby came to us kind of in a way of like, what if we interviewed somebody who is making major progress growing right now, building this and starting to see those successes, starting just to get a taste of those wonderful successes. At the same time, though, has this amazing story of a mindset shift that she went through to be the person that she is today in not a very long amount of time. And that's why I thought this would be great to share is that some of us think this is a transformation that happens over years. And the more I got a chance to talk to Abby, the more I was like, there's not a whole lot of time in here that she went from maybe real estate, maybe not. I don't know. We'll keep it around if it's convenient. And to like, oh my gosh, I could see doing this with my son, Miles. And that's like a whole journey of like long term from like, yeah, incredible. So, Abby, welcome again. I'd love for you just to share a little bit about your marketplace, where you're selling real estate right now, and a little bit about. So, so if people ever want to come find you, they know where to find you. Oh yeah, great. I'm in Palm Beach County. It's it's growing West Palm, which is um, where Palm Beach International Airport is, is being completely redeveloped. So we're bringing a lot of businesses in. So we have not really slowed down. I, I have not felt too much of a lull. So we're busy. There's lots of people who want to live here and it's an amazing place to live. We're very close to the beach, right by the beach. And you really do. You wake up every day and you're like, this is a gorgeous, amazing place. So it's, it's a lot of fun here. And there's definitely a lot of people coming and wanting to find properties around here. You live where a lot of people call vacation. That's where you live. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, so now, uh, Abby, you, you came into Ninja coaching and you came into Ninja ever since we've started this podcast, we have more and more people that have said, I, I found the podcast first. And then I kind of found my journey in here of finding Ninja and learning more about Ninja. Would you mind sharing with us a little bit about what that has looked like from where you first kind of learned about Ninja to kind of where you're at today with the level of Ninja you're working with? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, when I heard the Ninja podcast, I actually didn't, I wasn't drawn to the name. So it took a while to get past just the name. I didn't understand. And so we started listening and I'd go, what is this? I didn't read the book. I didn't know anything about it. I just started listening to the podcast during my commute, which is about 40 minutes plus in the morning. And it was a great mindset, like a great way to start my day. Cause it's always, there's always just nuggets of information, positivity, ways that people are doing things. And I'm like, that is that it just always resonated. So after a year of pretty much daily listening, going back and just going formal, I was in a spot where I really needed to make a change. It just, I wasn't, I was doing really well on the outside, like really hitting those marks, but it wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't feeling right. So I was gravitating more and more. So then I listened to the book and then I, from there said, I really need, I need this. I need this all around me. And how am I going to do that? That's how I found Heather. So we find Heather. And then soon after that, you got to an installation. Is that correct? Yes. Very soon. That was an adventure too. Yeah. And that's a lot of people, a lot of people that listen to this, they're like, well, we found the installation, then we found, you know, then, or we found the book, then the installation, then usually the podcast. And so you are kind of more of like what we're starting to see a lot of right now that are coming in through kind of a different way and learning about this in a little bit of a different way. Now, when we look at your real estate background of where you came from, when you're like, I need to change, I need to maybe do something a little bit different from what's been shared with me. And I'm going to hopefully have Heather jump in on this in just a second too. 
you were in a, a team at that point in time, right? Trying to kind of figure out, is this really the right path for me? And do I want to be in a team or do I want to be in my own? Is that right? Yes. Um, going way back, I'm the most unlikely realtor you'd ever meet. I wasn't drawn to it. I never envisioned myself doing this at all. If, if you told me prior to it happening, I would have been like, there's no way, no way. Yeah. And in fact, when I got it and got my license, I said through the beginning, one and done. I'm going to do this one transaction and I'm done. So there's just always, you know, people that have ended up in my life and they said, come with us. That's how I ended up on the team. Abby, real quick, what makes you get in this business saying one and done? Because like not everybody goes and gets their license and be like, I'm just doing one transaction. I'm out like that. That's all I got. That's all I know I can do. What, what, what caused that? The pain and pleasure is a real thing. There was, was family property that I've been taking care of and I really didn't have time or, or the desire to do so really everything real estate was a turnoff to me. And I didn't want to be, you know, if it weren't for my husband, I probably wouldn't be owning a home. I'd be a lifetime renter. So I'm really the most unlikely person. And it got to a point where I was like, you know, you're, you're never here. What if you were to sell the home? And that went on for a while. Uh, and finally they said, well, well, we'll sell it, but we need you to be our realtor. And I said, well, I'm not a realtor. I, that's not even I'm the furthest thing from it. And they said, well, we'll do it, but you need to be our realtor. So I came from it, you know, I came from respect for the industry of, of making sure that I did it right. And so somehow I was like, okay, well, we're seasonal here. So if I'm going to make this happen and I looked at the calendar, I'm like, I've got six weeks to figure out how to get my license, get it and just fly. And so that I was so wanting to get that property off of my list of things to take care of. That I went and got my license. And while I was still, you know, working full time somewhere else, studied it, learned, I didn't even know the language. It was like learning a foreign language to me. So it was an intense six weeks and somehow, some way I passed it on the first try and just reached out to people who I knew were in the industry that I, that I did respect. And then that's how I ended up on the team. My daughter hates when I mention her on the podcast, but she right now is getting a real estate license. And I'm going to remind her that you got your license in six weeks, just so yeah. we're clear. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Abby, I'm going to, I'm going to have my daughter make, maybe I may even have her reach out to you and you can tell her how you did it. There you go. But yeah, Matt, jump in. I was going to say, Abby, you know, you get into this industry with this, you know, one and done. And, you know, I, I know in the beginning it was like, I'm not going to stay in this forever, even after you stayed after that one. And you went through, you know, a lot of that conversation, I'm sure with yourself of this is going to be the last one or this is it. This I'm just going to do this a little bit more. But there must have been something, obvi there, obviously there was something in the back of your head that kept you moving down the path to find Heather. And so I'm curious as to what, and then I want to hear about, you know, how you started with Heather and everything too, but what was the thing that kept you going long enough to be able to form a new relationship with Heather and then make this major mindset shift? Seeing it done right, seeing it done well. The team I was with, they're former principals, both of them at schools. And I think they really had that mindset in a lot of ways of taking care of the family. And when they said, you know, well, come join us, I go, what would I possibly do? Why would, and they go, just what you did with the families at the school, you really, you know, wanted to take care of them. They'd come in because, you know, as an administration, so they'd come through the front door. Usually that's not good if you're called to the school in the middle of the day. I wouldn't know it was happening. So you're, they're coming in hot, I would say, but I could understand that as a parent. I'm like, I'd be right there with you. This is scary. You don't know, but somewhere in your brain, you know, probably your kid might be responsible for what they're saying happen, whatever that is. And to just relate to somebody and diffuse that was just a natural thing because that's what I'd want somebody to receive me as if I'm nervous, what's happening, you know, and you're just in that mindset where you're so they gravitated towards that. And that's what they said. And I go, well, I can do that. I mean, I can take care of people. And that's how it started. And that's how I stayed because it was, it was a lot of fun with them. Um, they were very good at it. They were great to watch with the way that they did it really worked for them. It was, you know, and I could be by their side helping, but it was, um, you know, as things progressed and as I did more and more and more, that was when I realized I can't do it exactly like them. I'm not them, but something's got to change. And we were so, so busy. And that's the way you know, you want to be, but it just wasn't, it was, it was wearing. They do a lot. I, I give them a lot of credit. It was a lot for me to, to do. 
I think the interesting thing about real estate is there there's a lot of ways you can build this. There's a lot of ways you can you can focus your energy towards real estate. And there is no right right one way to do it. Depending on what you want your specialty to be and the type of people you want to work with, the the types of situations that you're going to guide people through, whether it's through, you know, end of life estates that you're helping people with to their first time home they're going to buy. I mean, we get the gamut or to building wealth. And I think as you go through this, you start to find your path of like, I have a certain place that I really love and thrive in real estate. And I think that sounds kind of like you're acknowledging like these guys do it great, but it's not necessarily how it's going to work for me long term. So from that point, obviously the podcast is in your life. You listen to the book and at some point you're like, I need somebody in my life to help me with this and enter Heather stage right. (laughs) So what did that look like when you're like, I feel like I need somebody to help me down this path, Abby? I think because I've always had that, like I said, immediately I reached out to them and said, I I just want to do this one. I know you guys have been doing it and they, you know, they were new to it too. They said, yes. So I think when I knew I needed to, the podcast resonated with me so much that I wanted to find that. I wanted to find that community and do it that way. If it was done that way, if, if real estate could be done the way that you all are doing it, then there was longevity in it for me. But I just didn't know if it was possible. There were, there were a couple, I would say there's Ariel who lives near here. And before I did any of it, I called her because she was on the Facebook page, which is amazing. And I saw, wait, there is another ninja here. And she was great. These were 10 minute conversations. And I know she was in the middle of a million things. She's a high producer as well. And she goes, no, you should go. You're going to love it. I'm like, okay, because this is how I'm feeling. And I'm just feeling like, she's like, this is what you need. And then again, after the installation, I called back before I did coaching and I think I did the same thing. And she doesn't know me. She wasn't getting anything out of it, but she took the time. And I knew there was a lot going on to be like, oh, here's what it did for me. Here's another thing you can try. And it just, I'm like, okay, so this really exists and there's others out there. And that, that really was like, okay, let's make it bigger. Ninjas are amazing. I, I, I tell the coaches as they come into the community and they start, I mean, then they've been around Ninja for a long time. I'm like, you just wait. You're going to get a chance to meet the most amazing people around the United States that look at this whole picture as just a different thing. And they're willing to give and support each other and help each other. So it sounds like you found a local that fit that bill. Very much so. That's so awesome. Well, Heather, let let me bring you into the mix here. You've been so patiently sitting there and waiting Oh, I love it. So Abby reaches out to you and obviously you meet somebody who's in a place of wanting to make a transition, probably. And I'll be curious to hear from you, like the stage she was in of like, really, how long is this business really going to be around for her? Is she all in for the end of time? Or is this still kind of something like, how can I make this work or make it last a little bit longer, maybe three years, maybe a little bit longer. But give me a little insight. How was it when Abby first came into your world? When Abby first came into my world, she was definitely functioning in high negative. If, if we look at the quadrants, right? <laughs> we were in high negative and we needed to really figure out like, what do we want from this business, right? And how can we create it? And I remember asking Abby the question, we were diving into her whys and I asked her the question is like, hey, while we're figuring this out, while we're building this business, can you find joy in the journey? And she looked at me and she said, no, but I can tolerate it. <laughs> <laughs> and so in, instead of just trying to shift her mindset immediately, we really just started diving into some thought work around what do we want to create in this business? And in order to do that, we kind of had to take accountability that Abby had created a business in a world that wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't in alignment. It wasn't good or bad. It just wasn't in alignment with what she wanted. So we had to like kind of take responsibility for that. So then we could start building the business that was going to be in, in alignment with what she wanted how she wanted to help other people and how she wanted to show up for herself and her family. And it took a little bit of time. And then all of a sudden, about, I don't know, three and a half months later, one day she says to me, this business is so amazing. I could see Miles helping me someday. And I'm like, okay, we've had a monumental shift here. (laughs) And that's when I reached out to Garrett. Well, you, Heather, you made a comment to me is that the 
taking the ownership of acknowledging what we built that got us here. Like we are the ones that constructed this picture that we have today and helping Abby take control and say, let's take ownership also of what we can build going here into the future. And when you said that to me, like that really, I think a lot of people don't realize that where they're at today, the moment that they're in right now, a lot of us feel like that that's happening to us. Like this is something that like the outside forces have done to us, maybe the situation that we're currently in. And there is something so incredibly powerful of saying, I actually created the situation that I'm currently in right now. And let's create something different that we're maybe a little bit more excited about or extremely excited about. Did I put that together right? 100%. And one of the things that Abby and I have worked on, and I'm just so proud of her (laughs) and how far we've come, but working on doing it from not a place of self-judgment, but from this place of grace and love and acknowledgement that I'm here, I created it, it's okay. And now I get to create something different. And that's the journey. The word grace is something that we talk about a lot, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. It doesn't have to be this perfect bow Let's just every day go, okay, we're one step closer to figuring out what we want and creating it with this peace and alignment. And really, it's, it's been so just fun to watch Abby take it all on, not just learning the system, but creating accountability in the most loving way to herself and everyone around her. So Abby, what, what was it like going through, sounds like it was about a three and a half month process of this uh mindset shift with Heather, you know, what was it like going through the conversations with Heather, the questions, the the grace, the accountability? What was that like for you? You know what, Matt, there was so much going on all around at that time. Heather will tell you every single time we met, it was a different backdrop. She's like, where are we today? What's happening today? There were so many things going on. You know, you have your family, your work, yourself, your health. Those are like the major things. And if if one of them is out of balance, you can function. If two of them are out, it gets a little harder. If all of it is like, you can really get stuck. So I would feel bad in the beginning conversations. I would, she never made me feel, you know, she was great at just keeping me moving forward because there were so many things that I needed to adapt or get, just get it into a flow in order to actually focus on the work. And that, that was very difficult. And I would, I would get on the phone. I'm like, I am a broken record. I feel like I'm a broken record, but I also knew, and we would talk about a lot because it was, it was a really tough time, just a very, you know, emotional time. And I'm not very much of an emotional person in that respect. I'm usually not in a negative spot for very long. I'm a worrier, but I'm not negative. So it's like, when I was there, I'm like, okay, I know when I feel this, I'm not afraid of it because I'm getting to that pretty low point where I'm feeling. And that means something amazing is going to be there. So like, she just had to keep being that, that kind of light. And it was going to be, it's not going to be an overnight thing. I knew that. But in that respect, she kept putting other things in my path to help. So it wasn't just meeting her once a week. In fact, and, and I want to mention, we're down to every other week because she gave me so many tools. So then it started with the mastery that you offer for your coaching group. Then added on to that, the ninja path. So I went into the business planning. I'm in it now. And then the accountability pods. So I get time through all the things that the program offers. There's probably four times, you know, four days of the week where I'm really with a ninja discussing it, figuring out those goals, staying accountable to them through the accountability groups. And we all do it a little bit differently. And that has really just, I have my team and we're from all over the country. And that is like, just, just, there's so many things I've realized that I have now through this and through the work that Heather's done and been like, well, do you know about this? And appropriately adding it in where I can just, yeah. Maybe she just called the other week. She's like, somebody wants to start a skills group in practice. Do you want that? I'm like, sign me up for that. <laughs> and when she met me, it would have been the joke of my family when we don't want to do something, sign me down. It was like, okay, I'm here Just sign me down. I need to figure out how to gracefully exit this industry. And there's a part of me, she's like, well, then what are we, you know, kind of, what are we doing? Well, there's a part of me that feels like I could do it the way that I'm hearing you all describe it. And if I can do that, you know, so she really had to, with everything that was going on, grace became a lot that we said, she's like, give yourself grace. I'm like, but I didn't reach this goal. And she's like, but look at what you've done. 
you know, look what you just said. I'm going to repeat back what you just said. And so she shifted my mindset by really listening. And that's what's amazing about coaching is if you're on a team, if you're with a broker, yes, you get all that, but not this same way. You know, their goals are to help you increase your business and be more profitable. That wasn't my goal. You know, my goal was to really figure out how I was going to make this world of real estate a world that I would like it to be so that people like me are not scared of it, not feeling like, oh yeah, I'm a realtor and saying like, you know, I was, I was definitely the secret realtor, the secret agent, <laughs> not there and say it. So she had to really, you know, to be proud and to be able to go out there and be like, yeah, let's advertise. This is what I do. And this is how I do it. I had to have a good, a good way, a good process. And so I'm, I'm now I'm very proud of being in the industry and working with a lot of other realtors. And there's a lot out there that have the mindset that don't even know that there is program. So that's, yeah. that I think is, you know, when people ask what your goal is, I'm like, I'm like, it's just to make this change really out there to let people know that there's, you could have this kind of support too. So if you're kind of feeling like, yeah, everybody's thinking you're, you're doing great. You must love this, but you're not feeling it. Then there's something you know, and, and that can change. Yeah. A huge part of being successful in anything is being proud of what you're doing and being excited about what you're doing. Otherwise, you're just going through the motions. You're just doing the stuff going, okay, I guess this is what my job is right now. I guess this is what I'm doing. We And we get to watch it as coaches all the time. When somebody takes ownership and pride in what they're doing, all of a sudden, like the lights turn on. All of a sudden, the clients can feel that and you're not only just doing this and showing up because, I okay, I'm a realtor. You're showing up because you have passion and pride and energy, positive energy around this. And it's much more exciting to work with somebody that brings that to the table. And your comment of you know th that kind of like maybe hanging your head a little bit low about having like to mention that you're a realtor. I actually think there's a lot of people out there like that. There's enough, you know, real estate agents don't necessarily always get put on the highest pedestal of you know, respect out there all the time. And so I think it's uh, one of those that you have to see is like, oh, there is a way of doing this that I can have that energy. And I think that sounds like what you found. You found that way of going like, oh, there is a way to be an incredible realtor and to be proud of what I am out here and to be doing this on a different level. Now, I want to I want to ask you, as you came into that new light, as you're like, OK, I, I can own this and I love this and I can see myself doing this with my son down the road. I mean, Miles is how old? He is 13, about to be 14. Okay, so you went from, I could see myself one transaction to maybe one year, to three years, maybe five years to now, we got a little bit till Miles joined you. He's not like gonna turn around tomorrow and all of a sudden get it. Yeah, he may drop out of school and just be like, I'm getting my license, we're doing this. <laughs> well, he's gonna get his license in five weeks. Yeah. He's gonna be like, mom, <laughs> five weeks, not six. Like, why'd you wait so long, mom? <laughs> <laughs> how how has your business changed since you have adopted this new mindset about what it means to be a real estate agent? Like, what have you seen in the working with your clients and the working with people and the energy that you're able to give to them by having this new energy with you? It has calmed me down and centered me so much. I think one of the big things, and, it, and it's interesting, it was, and this was a tough one, you get in habits and I was in a habit of it's a real estate emergency. There is no real estate emergency, but we all function like this is the most, you know, you're on the soccer field and you're on the phone and like, okay, they're doing something that's important. And then I realized I could not wind down and the things I was putting my go-tos, I'm a very, you know, I habitually do things. I like to know what's coming next. It's, you know, this, this, this in my day, there were habits in place that were just becoming unhealthy that weren't me. And I realized I'm like, okay, this, and I wasn't sure how to break them. If I could, I was very starting to get concerned. So I actually did a lot of that, you know, mentioned it to Heather, we've talked about it. And then I went forward and mentioned it to my accountability pod. Some of the response was, oh, yeah, realtors, you know, we go out, you know, that's part of real estate because it gets very stressful. I said, well, I'm, I'm going to change that. And I think they were, there was a lot of concern and I had a lot of concern. What if I can't, because then I really have, you know, this habits become a problem. They cheered me on. I'm, when I say there is a community and we check in, and then when I did that, I'm like, I can, I can do hard things. And I'm going to keep going. If I can make that, I'm going to start doing that for everything. Every time I get that panic over this part in a transaction that has just always been there, I'm going to rewrite it. I love it. And so that's what we're kind of working on now so that I am not in that mode of like, let's run, run, run. And that's, I think a lot of people see that and feel the industries like that and just always everything's great. I'm like, no, maybe, maybe I can just be 
real, you know, <laughs> this is reality. This is real. And, uh, not as an excuse, but just, yeah, this is, I get that in it. So I think, I think that's the biggest, biggest change is realizing the habits that we're in that keep getting those results. And even if they're good results, if the habit and the way you're going about it is something you want to change, it's a little tweak. It seems overwhelming because it, you know, but it's just a little thing. Yeah. What a great way of describing how you just go from being along for this real estate ride, which a lot of realtors are, even if they're having fun on that ride, right? They're just, you know, hanging on like, Woo, this is fun, right? To like you being in the driver's seat, taking control and owning your direction. And, and I think maybe partly of going on this journey from I'm out in a year, three years, I could tolerate this business to, okay, well, how do I really make this exciting for me? Yeah. Heather, what, what was it like for you in, in watching this transformation and Abby and continuing? I mean, this is obviously an ongoing thing that you guys are continuing to work on creating the magic wand life, really. So what was it like for you, Heather, you know, going through all this? It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of patience, a lot of, I go back to that word love, right? But Creating intentionality, I think, is a big part of it, right? And so knowing that Abby has these patterns of letting her desire to help other people overtake her life, right? You start to learn the patterns of your clients so you can help them go, oh, hey, wait a minute, let's slow down. Is this what we want to be creating, right? We have, and so our time together, because she's working on her skill set through mastery, it really does allow us to jump into the thought work, which for me is where I think the magic really happens for a lot of people. And so we're able to continue to be really intentional about what she's creating. And she's so open to like, there could be another way when we're open to like looking at things from a different way. And when our clients are open to looking at like, I can create this however I want. It is so much fun, you guys, so much fun, right? And it also requires patience and all of the other pieces. And so I think my journey with Abby is just like life, right? You get the highs and the highs and the lows and the lows, and we get to be there on it together. And that's, it's just so special. It really is. I'm, I'm so happy to be here today and so grateful for you know, how open she is and and just watching her create what she wants. It, it is, it's just magical. Well, Abby, you'd mentioned, you know, sometimes the coaching calls at first kind of felt like a broken record. And I think it's um, something that actually can stop a lot of people with coaching because they sometimes feel like they're not making any progress. Like here we are having the same discussion over and over and over again. I'm not changing. I'm not maybe making the adjustments. We're back again to the same place we were when we started here maybe a month ago on this same topic. But at the end of the day, it's like what happens is with that repetition and having to talk it through, it allows the coach and it allows you to see it from different lights, see it from different angles, kind of what are we missing? And at some point, they're always, if the coaching client wants to see a different picture and the coach can see that there's a different way of doing it, at some point, the light kind of like turns on and it's like, a, oh, there it is. There's how we're going to take this next step here and go. And and a lot of times I think when people feel like they have to come back and have the same conversation again, we look at that as a failure. And really what it is, is we're just learning. Every single time we come back to a coaching call and we have to relive it, we have to open up the box again, we have to rip it all apart. It's just a learning opportunity for all of us. Heather, it's a chance for you to learn who this person is that you're working with and what's important to them. And it's like, oh, this person really cares about the client so much so that they might be actually kind of getting in their way on some stuff. And Abby, you're looking at it and going like, okay, I never saw it from that light. Maybe I could do this a little bit differently. And, and it takes time. And, uh, and I just, I love that you both have been so open to be willing to learn and to come back and put it on the table again and try to figure it out. It's what's gotten you to where, where I want to ask next is here you went from one transaction. I'm just going to do this one and we're going to be done with it. To in the last 10 days, you have three new listings. <laughs> okay. That's different than one transaction. So three new <laughs> listings in the last 10 days. And as you were sharing this with me, you're like, I've got this plan of how I'm going to help these people. 
And I can do this in a way that's on a bigger picture. And I was so taken back by your approaches because so few people do it this way. Will you share with me what you sh share with everybody here, what you shared with me the other day about your approach to these three listings and how it's bigger than just you? Sure. And uh, so in our area, this month is just one of our busier months because of um, it being seasonal. So again, when I first started, November was when I had to have my license by when I went in the calendar because that's the month. So of course, I get these three listings and there's just limited time to really get it exposed to everybody and get people through the door. Open houses do work. I, I love open houses. And it's the first week that two of them are going to be you know, open on the market. The other one put on a little bit earlier. I'm one person. So what do I do? Either I run one at a time and someone's going to have to wait but that's not right for my, for the sellers. Like the best thing I can do by the sellers is get all three open at the same time. They are literally walking distance and get people through and create that buzz. And then I thought, how am I going to do that? I mean, I could call the, you know, my team would always help me out, but I thought there's other real estate agents in my community. And what if they would agree to help me out and do it? And what can I do for them that would make it worth it for them? And the response was amazing. And we're now on a group chat together. And I said, they're going, so you're just putting this on. And you know these are around a million plus homes or just a little under, and then one's 1 1.7. And you're saying, I can go in there. You're going to set it up. You're going to put the information there. You're going to set up the snacks. You're going to put out the balloons. And I get all the leads. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I'm like, well, I have three listings. That's how much more can I do? I'm like, if you're, if you're willing to do it, it's going to serve my client. It's going to show the community that we all work together. None of us are at the same brokerages. And so we're all in a group chat now. I said, I want to make sure that you guys have everything you need. And all I want, like, if you bring enough, if somebody comes in and they now become your buyer, that is amazing. You know, I would love it because we both are going to be able to collaborate. And that's the idea. And that's what I want to show people. It is, we are, you know, and I want the community to understand because as somebody who was against or like anti, like I, Literally open houses for me. I never went to them ever. And I didn't even look at homes. And the one time when we bought this house, my husband went ahead of me and told the realtor, do not approach my wife. <laughs> it will turn around. And, and my attitude was, I don't need to be sold on anything. You don't need to tell me what I like. You don't need to point it out. Like you need to walk away. It, it was, that's how, I, so to go from that to this, that's, that's what I want to offer to people out there who are in a mindset of like, okay, that's just a, that business is, you know, just a shady business. Nope, nope, nope. We're all going to do it together. There's more than enough people who need us. We're not competition. And if I look at it like that, it's never going to change. That was the word you used with me, is that we're not in competition with one another. And you started applying the Ninja Systems literally into your fellow colleagues in the industry in different offices. And the one thing you just said that you didn't say to me when we were talking the other day was like, I go in, I set up the balloons, I set up the signs, I set up the snacks, which means that you can control the look and the feel and the energy of what's going to happen around this for your personal client. But you've now entrusted somebody to come from the outside and manage the people as they come through, which means that you have predictability on your side. Your clients have predictability of what it means to hire Abby Baker. But you've also, again, given this gift of trust and and teamwork with this bigger group, which many agents won't do. I think it's incredible. I don't know why it's not done this way. You know, and I, know, I hope it depends Because it's just that. not how we've done it, Abby. Don't you know how it's supposed to be done? <laughs> 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 this, is, this is how it's going to be done. Otherwise, none of us are going to... It's, it's the, the industry itself just won't survive the other way. It's going to be a turnoff and people have options. Like I used the example just when I was watching, you know, at a school and I'd watch a team of second grade teachers. And when they were working together and it was fluid, the team was happy. The students were happy. The parents were happy. Nobody really knew what that was. But if I found one member, one teacher that was a little off, it affected the whole team. It affected the students. It affected the families. And everyone's like that second grade is a mess. And it was just to watch that. Now, would we consider a second grade teacher competition to the one next door? No, we don't look at it. The world does not view it like that. They collaborate. Are they doing everything the same? No. Do they offer like this work for me? Maybe it'll work for you. Yes. And when they do that and you watch it, you just see the success and you hear how happy everybody is and they come into work. And when you just have one person out there in that team, in that cohort, that is the one, 
that's like on an island by themselves, even it just affects everybody and their view. So I think I have to just keep looking out from the very beginning. Well, come with us. And what would I do? Same thing you did there. Just take care, you know, change the mindset when they're coming through the door. Yes, there was rough things happening. You're in here for a not so great reason, but I'm with you. I get that. Like we're going to, it's going to be fine. The kid's going to go to college one day. They're going to be a huge success. And you're going to laugh about this. And that's the truth of it. You know, it's, there is no, this real estate industry is not like, we should not be, if we're arguing or fighting or not getting along, we're approaching the whole thing wrong and it's going to ruin it for, you know, clients and for each other. So it has been amazing because I just started that. I'm like, how am I going to do this? How do I serve them? So the first thing I did was other community members. They know it best. They're going to be great in there. They're going to be fabulous. And I would love to work with them. And then um, when I needed a few more, because it's we're doing it Saturday, Sunday. So we're talking a lot of slots to fill. And I want to be able to flow between. So if there's any questions, I can walk right over and help. I don't need both sides of the transaction. I'm so happy that they're going to, if, if they can rock it, and bring people in and showcase our, our community that I love and that they love, that's a win for everybody. So it's been really, really fun. They're really excited. We're all excited. And then some people from my brokerage that I've never met because I'm new there did the same thing within one hour on Facebook. I have all these offers and they're like, so what is it? What is it that you, you're doing this? I don't get it. I go, no, that's exactly it. And if you want to meet me, we're meeting on Friday at 11. I'm showing them the community. I'm giving them all like a heads up, drive them around so they can feel confident when they do it. And why would I do that? Because that's the best thing for everybody involved. So why wouldn't I do that? Mm. Abby, you went from not very long ago to, I'm not really sure what this word ninja <laughs> is and what is ninja about to like full blown ninja. Like, <laughs> I mean, full bore. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and you're, you, you like the way you've channeled this, like almost disgust for this, like, oh, I don't want to be a realtor <laughs> who wants to do that to like look at how amazing this industry can be to serve people in in buying and selling i think just your whole approach of well why isn't it this way like you you have this absolute thought process and and really mindset of abundance around how you want to grow which is no surprise that okay three listings came on like that situation was created for you to be able to create this opportunity for these other agents to see, oh my gosh, like we can do business this way. And so you've kind of opened up this gateway for yourself with this mindset shift, which is so cool. So thank you for doing that. Cause I think it's people listening are like, really? I can do, even ninjas are like, I can do that. I was going to say, is, even ninjas are out there going like, wait, what? Like, wait, hold on, back that up a little bit. I want to hear that again. Like what happened? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And Heather, I'm sure you were a part of like helping structure this. What is this going to look like and everything? So, you know, from your perspective, looking ahead at, you know, Abby's trajectory now, like, what are you excited about in terms of the conversations that y'all are going to have around things like this, managing this type of deal flow, you know, so what's, what's to say you? Yeah. You know, and this was all Abby's brainchild. Like I, you know, this was her, her thing, like, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. What do you think? And I'm like, I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing when we feel comfortable to create things, to look at things out of the box, to give ourselves permission to try new things. The more people like Abby that, can collaborate and bring kindness and love and service to this industry, the better for all of us. And so I, I let Abby do her thing and she shares with me and, and we pull out like thoughts and, Hey, you know, is this what we want to create in our business? And, and sometimes there's things that we're like, Oh, wait, that might not be what I want to create, but whatever she brings to the table, I'm, I'm excited to jump on board with and just, you know, help her see what her thoughts are creating in her world and, and let her fly. Well, what's really important, what you just said, Heather, was this was all Abby's brainchild, because I think a lot of people come to coaching going, I'm going to get a coach and they're going to have all these great ideas and all this stuff I can do. And we get people a lot of that say, you know, I'm, I've hired you as a coach. Give me an example. Let's say of a real estate review. Just give me one that works for somebody else. You know, give me somebody open, somebody's open house plan <laughs> and how that works for somebody else. So I can just mirror that because obviously it works. Yeah give me a postcard that just works for somebody else because I just want to take that. I'll put my logo on it. And I'll just send it out. 
And the beauty of being a really good coach is being able to ask the right questions to help somebody come up with their own brilliant ideas that resonates with who that person is, where then they take it and they run with it. And you can hear, Abby, as you talk about this open house that you're doing and how you're like, I've got more slots to fill because we got more open houses that we're going to be doing. And I got to bring in more and getting them all together and giving them a tour of the neighborhood so they all know what's going on and doing this in the best light. Like, I can't give that to everybody and be like, oh, here's the way you do open houses now moving forward. But for you and for you to come up on your on with your own and your own energy and run with it, that's where big successes come from. And that's like one of the most beautiful coaching relationships I can ask for when I'm hearing about successes that are happening is we don't want to come up with the great ideas. You don't want us to come up with the great ideas. It's a, it's a short-term Band-Aid when we do. But when you come up with your own stuff, that's long-term success. So way to go, both of you. Thank you. Yeah, that's what Heather does. It creates that space, right? And it, it, it reminds me of um, my most favorite professor. I knew, like anyone who came to him, the idea could be completely bonkers. And he would get so excited with you and then kind of adjust it so it could be doable. Like that's, you know, pull out the things. Like if that, go for it. You know, it's never, there's never a bad idea. So either I'll come to Heather okay, I want to feel like this. Like, let's, you sh she'll give me some tweaks. Okay, watch out for this, look for that. But then that sets you on a pattern of like, okay, I can, I can do it like this. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm just going to create it. And I think people pick up on that energy. So when they first start, like, I don't understand. So you're just, I'm like, you are a seasoned, amazing realtor. The fact that you're willing to go sit at an open house for me is amazing by you. So what yeah. more can I ask for? You're the right person, be there. So I think it's just, they're all on board. I'm getting texts like for the last, it hasn't stopped. So we're all like kind of thinking about the next thing. And, you know, now it's branched out to other people who have listings in here. They're like, Hey, I'm not going to make it, but I heard what you're doing. I'm going to set somebody in. We'll have one too. I love it. So cool. Yeah. And I think that that is a misconception that people have that coaching, you're going to show up to a coaching call and I'm going to tell you how to do it. Yep. That is yeah. not at all what, what I do with my clients. I can't speak for everyone, but it's really more about how do you want to create it? Let's figure out what lights you up, right? It doesn't matter what lights me up. What matters is how you want to create this, how you want to show up to the world, right? And that's what we really dig into is like, how do we create that? I love it. Fantastic. I'm going to put a bow on this one. You guys have been great. This has been so awesome. This is so good, man. <laughs> Seriously, uh, Abby, one, I want to say thank you so much for joining us and, and being a part of this and being willing to come on and open to share and be vulnerable in front of, uh, I don't know, there's a couple thousand people out there listening to this, give or take. So Abby, uh, thank you. And if anybody wants to find Abby, as I was saying before, we've got um, Premier Brokers International, Palm Beach County down in Florida. She's incredible. All I've heard is great things. And I got to give one more shout out to Miles. Miles, I, you might have heard Miles on a podcast in the past. Uh, he listens to the podcast every morning with his mom on the way to school. And, uh, and he's a big part of Abby's life and uh, why Abby shows up the way that she does. So Miles, if you're listening out there, buddy, thanks for listening. As always, uh, your mom's amazing. Heather, thank you for being amazing and jumping on this podcast with us also this episode. You're incredible. You're an amazing addition to our team and, and uh, our group of coaches that we have. So thank you. Thanks, Matt, you're just mad. You're <laughs> just, I don't know what to say. I'm just here. So. <laughs> well, I want to thank Abby and Heather as well for, for joining us. And thanks to everybody for listening and embracing the story and hopefully going and putting some of this stuff into action in your business too. If this has inspired you, use it to your advantage and make use of our Facebook group, which you just search for the Ninja Selling Podcast on Facebook. You'll find the group and you'll find amazing people like Abby in there who you can connect with and be inspired to grow your business. So it's a wonderful thing. Well, everybody, thank you, Abby, Heather, thank you. Until next time. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.